Generation Z likes PewDiePie more than Justin Bieber, LeBron James, and Elon Musk, a new study has shown. Not surprising as well, 97% of Generation Z is on YouTube. They're actively watching YouTube and using the app more than popular platforms like Instagram and Snapchat. And of course, more popular more popular than Twitter, which is mainly for news people now. And of course, more popular than Facebook, which is for grandmothers, uh, single parents, <laughs> and those who want to get misleading or false uh, political advice. <laughs> Now, Bieber's the only person more recognizable as a name to Generation Z or Z, depending on where you're from. Hint, hint. Nudge, nudge. He's the only person more notable, notably recognized than PewDiePie. However, Felix Kielberg, which is PewDiePie's um, real name, trust me, we're bros. Uh, he's more popular than Justin Bieber, LeBron James, and more. Who is he not more popular than? Of course, your favorite YouTuber, Andrew Says. Consider donating to me $1 a month on Patreon. Just uploaded some exclusive content on there for you. Uh, $1 a month gets you everything that you've ever dreamed of. And hey, it helps me out if you like, share, and subscribe this video. Notification bells, just come to the page. Uh, it's the fastest way to get, to get here. Bookmark it like it's 2002, you know? Now, as you can see, in terms of favorability in this uh, new poll of 13 to 38-year-olds, in terms of favorability, PewDiePie destroys Justin Bieber, who only has 18% favorability while overtaking LeBron James, Steph Curry, and Elon Musk. Now, frankly, I'm surprised the numbers are even that low for PewDiePie, but there is and has been a campaign out there to call PewDiePie some sort of supremacist and nationalist with the uh, appropriate demonetizable <laughs> monikers before that. Now when we look at girls, we see Beyonce is universally known and liked at two-thirds. But this girl named Zendaya, whom I did not know until I found out that she's an actress with like 62 million Instagram followers, which is about double the population of my country, she's the most liked at 72% favorability. More than half of Generation Z women do not seem to like Serena Williams or Jennifer Aniston. I'm not sure why about that one. Maybe it's her, uh, her relationship meddling. That's as far as I can tell. And only half favor YouTuber Shane Dawson. Now, if we look down at favor favorability by different demographics for PewDiePie, Shane, Shane Dawson, and Jeffree Star, who to the best of my knowledge is a makeup tutorial YouTuber, some guy, uh, things get more interesting. He's really popular, though. When I say some guy, I mean some guy to meet, to millions of people. It's the the guy. About two-thirds like PewDiePie, 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 as we saw above, but who does not like PewDiePie, of course? Clinton voters and millennial, millennial women do not have a favorable, favorable view of PewDiePie. All these words are tripping me up. PewDiePie, favorable, unfavorable. So much to intake here. Clinton voters don't like him. Interesting. I wonder why. Now for the others, only Gen Z women crack the top 50% barrier for favorability ratings uh, with Shane Dawson. Nobody else gets over 50%, which tells me PewDiePie is very popular and probably more popular than, than uh, this study would even show. Which is probably why so many people try to take him down. Uh, haters gonna hate, you go after the guy who's at the top of the game. Now here's what I disagree with this study. Here's where I disagree with this. Influencers are more trusted as brand spokespersons than celebrities. Now, what I think is on purpose is the term of celebrity versus influencer or social media influencer. There seems to be some sort of non sequitur, nonsensical, uh, non quantifiable difference here between celebrity and social media influencer or brand influencer. I think certain people like the YouTubes of the of the world and mainstream pop culture stemming from Hollywood and the media, they only want certain people they approve of to have this celebrity status. Why? Because as you can see, more people trust these influencers than actors or celebrities. YouTubers tend to be more informed on topics, they are more engaged in social media with their fans directly, and they get more hate, so they kind of see how the media machine works and uh, they know what to trust and not trust and they're less likely for lack of a better term to shill out for the for the dollars just to anywhere and when they do they're wildly called out and wild, wildly discredited for it and 
they produce uh, instead of just putting a Instagram message or a Twitter message out of a fake apology. Most of the time, they are pressured into doing an entire video of it and actually explaining themselves. Some do it better than others. Some do it more honestly than others. And what you can see at the bottom is. When asked to rate how important a series of 14 factors are when considering whether to follow an influencer, having a large following was the least persuasive to Gen Z and millennials, while authenticity was rated as the most important. To me, that answers the question as to why the people above that we've shown are less popular now than they may have been five or ten years ago. LeBron James, Serena Williams, Justin Bieber, even though I don't have a problem with Justin Bieber, let's be clear here, people. I think his interactions with the paparazzi are some of the best things I've ever seen and they make me like him better when he's just like can't you just be normal can't you just be nice you guys don't have to yell at me LeBron has his China stuff and he's always complaining Serena has her I'm a victim and playing tennis is for women's rights all in all they aren't that believable in their authenticity because they flip-flop back and forth on what is a, an important social justice cause to them what is an important um, thing for them to stand up against and it seems when their back's against the wall, they just claim victimhood. As for Shane, Shane Dawson, who I've watched an okay amount of his stuff, his big documentary on conspiracies is fun to watch. We haven't seen it. Claiming that, uh, not just claiming, but kind of showing that Chuck E. Cheese pizza is more than likely recycled. Uh, they recycle the uneaten pizza. So let's say you go and get a, a cheese pizza and you only eat half of it and somebody else comes over and orders a pepperoni pizza and a cheese pizza. It seems that their pizzas are made up of multiple discarded pizzas. The, the toppings don't line up, the crust don't line up, so on and so forth. So I can sort of see why people are 50-50 on him because a lot of his content um, is him being a friend to YouTubers that people don't like or going to give people a voice that people don't like. He's a very fair guy. I don't have any problem with him, but I can see why, if you're a fan of somebody else, uh, why you might not like him because he's giving uh, clout or airtime to people that other people don't like. No platform for fascists. <laughs> That's what that makes me think of. I hate the thought of uh, not liking somebody just because they speak to somebody else. The main message I've, I'm getting here from this study, this poll, whatever you want to call it, is that millennials and Gen Z are kind of all over the place, and PewDiePie is very popular. Obviously, you have to take from this. And I get it because now everybody is into their own things that they like. They like a million different things, and they may like 500 different things, but those won't even touch. Those won't even come in the realm, or to use a Tom Cruise term, not even in the vicinity of other things that you may like or may not like, people probably won't even have heard of a lot of the stuff that you like, and vice versa. And this is why I think the media doesn't like certain people becoming popular, because they can't control it. And why do they want to control it? Because they want to control the messaging, they want to control the viewpoints, and what is and what isn't outrageous. As you can see, the media gets to decide what's an important and non-important story. Violence in Chicago every week, people dying, uh, not that important to the media. Um, a phone call with Ukraine about Biden, not <laughs> the most important, even though corruption is likely in there. It's the same thing with YouTube. It's the same thing with a lot of these platforms. They want certain voices and people to be popular. And they'd rather, on YouTube especially, they'd rather you watch makeup tutorials or something about video games than listen to me, for example. Now, why is that? A lot of people seem to think that YouTube is starting to lean towards only having certain people promoted. They, they're obviously doing this to news, where they only want certain news companies being promoted. But I think what you're going to see in the future is much more selectivity about who gets to have a voice and who gets to have a reach and, and who doesn't. It's already happening, but I think in the future it'll be more vocal. I saw somebody make a suggestion that eventually there'll be viewer-only accounts and you'll have to be pre-approved pre only to, or even to upload videos. So if you want to upload anything, you have to be pre-approved uh, your content. You already see it with big name YouTubers who just have things removed. It's not even just demonetized anymore. It says, not suitable content. We've deleted this for you, <laughs> don't worry. And if you've been subbed to me for a long enough time, it's almost three years now that I've been doing this, uh, you'll notice that I used to get 10 times the amount of views when I had 5 to 10 times less subscribers. Uh, but since I was demonetized, it's slowly gone way down and down, just like the way everybody says it does. Now, I'm not owed this viewership. I'm not owned owed a platform by YouTube. It just sucks knowing you have reached certain lengths and then you're being hidden on purpose. It's like you're fighting an uphill battle. You're rowing against the current. Uh, 
Mark Zuckerberg knows a lot about that. He literally made his rowing friends row against the current. Who are those twin guys? They became Bitcoin millionaires, the first Bitcoin rich guys. Whatever, they got a funny last name. They're twins. So if I am your most favorite and likable and favorable YouTuber, you know where to go. I got to be more favorable than Serena, right? Hit the like button, share, subscribe. Uh, look me right into the eyes while you shower. Um, listen to my voice while you sleep. Donate $1 on Patreon. Uh, you won't notice a difference. $1 coming into your bank account one, more, one time a month. And you make it more possible for me to do this because unless things start to change, uh, my end seems to be drawing to an ear. And I don't mean that to freak any of the 10 diehard fans out. But um, thanks to YouTube, and I guess uh, we can go with China. We can praise China. Maybe that'll help us. Um, I don't know what they want. I don't know how to get out of the, under the suffocating blanket of YouTube. Uh, it's a thing that Tim Poole talks about a lot where certain topics and certain words will get you immediately demonetized and deranks, and that seems to be happening every single time. Um, so I don't know what to do in terms of YouTube. They clearly don't want people seeing my content, so any support you can give me is much appreciated. Now, if YouTube starts selecting who they want and who they do not want to become popular, I think you'll see more and more of this, and it'll become way out in the open, because I think they know that they're going to have their uh, protected status of being a platform taken away in the future, and they'll just be a publisher status, which means they'll be responsible for everything they put on there. So I think they'll be severely limiting what they'll be putting out on there or what they'll be allowing to be put out there. So there's just going to have to be another platform, which is a good reminder to tell you that I'm on Minds, I'm on Instagram, Andrew says on everything, and Andrew does on Instagram. I wouldn't lie to you, except for maybe this once. Except about, like, I don't know, my age or location. I'm 19. I don't know any better. Yeah.